So what if I told you there's a way you can supercharge your learning in photography? You can get better at a faster rate. And the way to do that is by using a 50 millimeter lens. I've stated this before, but if I could take a beginner photographer, I'd put them on a full frame camera, such as a 5D Mark II or even a one. I'd give them a 50 millimeter 1.8 and I'd stick them on that for the first year. There's a reason why I would do that. And that comes down to the benefits that limitations give you. You see, if you've got, let's say, 16 millimeters to 200 millimeters covered by loads of different lenses, you've got all these different focal lengths. You spend a lot of your time choosing which lens to use, but you're not necessarily thinking that much about composition because you're giving yourself a very easy time of framing your subject, which is different to the composition that you pick. You see, framing your subject is to just say, there's my subject, they're in the frame, they're big enough in the frame for you to see them. But to compose a picture is to say, what about all of the other stuff that's in the picture too? How much do I include? How much do I remove? Where do I place those elements within the frame? That's when we're talking about actual composition. But if we want to get better as photographers, if you want to improve your photography, you need to create restrictions so that you have to make decisions. So instead of being able to solve a problem of, of how do I fill this frame, what do I put into it? And you just zoom in to fill it. Prime lens, fixed focal length, will force you to move, get into different positions and try out different compositions to find something that works. And then you might try two or different things to see if they work. And that process of decision-making, specifically having to make those choices, is how we get better at photography. Being forced to say, well, do I want this in there? Do I want that? Maybe I should include this. Does this look better than that? That decision-making process repeated over and over again makes us better photographers. 50 millimeters is often referred to as an editorial focal length. And there's a reason for that because editorial means to put a collection of pictures together that tell a story, but there's more to it than just that. Because what 50 millimeters does is it allows you to include the subject and usually two or three or sometimes just one extra element. Bringing in that extra element is what helps us to tell the story. That can be really simple as if it's a lifestyle shoot, you can see someone drinking coffee, but you can also tell where they are. You can see if they're in a kitchen or a coffee shop or something else, and you can include those elements. It could be that we're putting several elements together within the picture to tell more of a story, that we see some other people in the background, we can tell whether the place is busy or not. We have more information. If we were to go and shoot on an 85 or a 70 to 200, what we often get is just isolation. So this is to say that we don't want necessarily anything in the background, we're just getting just the subject. So you would only see the person drinking the coffee, they could be anywhere at that point. And for those reasons, composition on a longer lens is much easier. In wedding photography, if you're working in a cluttered room where there's stuff all over the place, a longer lens would just cut all of that out and you can focus on people and their expressions and it makes your life easier. Conversely, working with a wide angle lens can often be seen as very difficult because you're including so much, there's so much to balance within the frame. And if you want to see more of my thoughts on balance, check out this video up here because I talk more in detail about balance and why the rule of thirds isn't necessarily the answer to everything. But the balance that we have in our pictures is absolutely critical and the more elements we have to balance the harder the composition becomes so this becomes potentially very difficult to work with there's a skill to working with wide angle lenses but wide angle lenses come into their own in things like landscape photography where there aren't a lot of different elements to balance but coming back to the 50 millimeter focal length it's not including as much as a 35 or 24 or wider that we have to think about lots of stuff to balance and it's not so tight that it's just cropping everything out and we're not having to think about those elements that need to be balanced together. We can take a 50 and start practicing how to get storytelling elements together. How can we say here's the subject and the context around them. That's what storytelling really is. It's why are they there? What are they doing? What's happening? Why is this thing in this place? So even if it's a car, it's what's the background? Where are they? It's not just here's a car and there's a bit of some wall or something behind them. It's like here a car, here's a car on a road and there's the village behind it. You get to see more context. So whatever genre of photography you're doing, being able to do this will help you. Even if you do things like wildlife and you're usually using a much longer lens, 
doing some street photography as practice, uh, something like 50 millimeters and composing, putting in those different elements can really help you because I see a lot of wildlife photography that's just like, here's a bird in a blue sky and that's it. But the really good stuff tends to have a couple of other little elements in there. So whatever genre of photography you do, shooting at 50 millimeters like this can help you. And here's how you do it. A lot of the photographers that I know don't practice. And this is what I'm saying. They're just going out and doing their photo shoot and that's it. I myself, throughout my years of being a photographer, I have always practiced. I've always made shoots which are not to go up anywhere or be, do anything, but they are, they are photo shoots that have limited me in some way. And my favorite way to do it is to go out and do some street photography with a 50 millimeter lens and walk around and take pictures of things. And I'll take pictures of <laughs> details of little bits and pieces just for the hell of it, just to get the composition. And like, even if it's like an entry keypad for a door, I will frame up a picture of that. Imagine that you have to take that thing and it's going to be part of a story in a magazine. And how do you frame that? Do you do it from the side? Do you do it from the front? How do you work with the lighting around you? Look for the light, what angle's best for it? Try different compositions out, but it's very, very productive as a training system for you to become a better photographer. And that is why I think that all photographers should spend time shooting on a 50 millimeter lens. If you like my videos and you find them useful, please consider buying me a coffee in the link in the description down below. It really helps me out and it helps me make more of these videos for you guys. If you become a member of this channel, you'll be able to see some more advanced videos on things like this in the future. And I'm gonna be spending time on this channel trying to help everyone get a little bit better at photography and improve the quality of their work. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care, bye bye.